Facebook instant lead forms are a great way to generate a bunch of leads at a low cost. However, managing these leads in Facebook directly or getting notified quickly can be tricky. So in this video, I'll show you how to connect your Facebook lead forms to your email using Zapier. That way your leads go straight to your inbox. Hey everyone, it's Axel here. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to connect your Facebook ads to your Gmail using an automation tool called Zapier. And so Zapier is an automation tool and it essentially allows you to connect any one software with another software. This allows you to build powerful automations in order to reduce errors in your workflows and save you a bunch of time while doing it. And so some of you currently might be using Facebook lead ads to generate a bunch of leads at a low cost right now. However, you might've noticed that Facebook isn't the best at notifying you when these leads come in and it's not the best at managing the leads themselves. So instead of managing the leads through Facebook, what we can do is we can use this tool called Zapier to connect those leads to your Gmail. That way, every time you get a lead, it lands straight into your inbox. And from there, you can manage your leads more effectively. So for this video, I'm going to assume you already have a Facebook campaign running and that it's a lead form campaign. So for this example right here, I'm currently running ads to get people to sign up to a newsletter where if they click on the ad, they essentially have an instant lead form, which prompts them for their full name, their email, and their phone number. When someone fills out this form, I I want to use this tool called Zapier to essentially take that information and send it to me as an email to my Gmail account. That way, every time someone clicks on my ad and signs up, I get that lead information directly in my inbox. So the first thing you wanna do is open up Zapier. The free tier includes, I think, up to 50 free automations per month, so you can just start with that. And the first thing you'll want to do is connect your Gmail and your Facebook account to your Zapier account. And so to do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go on this left menu right here and you're gonna click on App Connections. So the first thing I wanna do is connect my Facebook ad account and my Gmail account. That way, Zapier knows that not only are you using Gmail and Facebook in your automation, but specifically which Facebook account and which Gmail account you want to use. So I'm gonna start with Gmail. I'm gonna start by clicking add a connection and search for Gmail right here. I'm gonna click on that, click add connection. And then from here, I'm gonna click my personal email, click continue right here. I'm going to select this option right here. And I'm also going to select this option right here. And I'm then gonna click continue. And now I can see that I'm prompted saying that my new connection to Gmail is added and I can see that my Gmail account, specifically this one right here, is now connected to Zapier. So that first part's done. The next thing I wanna do is the same thing, but for my Facebook account. So I'm gonna add connection again, and I'm gonna type in Facebook. And specifically, this is gonna be for lead ads. So I'm gonna click on lead ads right here and I'm gonna add a connection. I'm gonna continue as my name right here. And now we can see that my Facebook lead ads, specifically for this email, which is the email connected to all of my Facebook ad accounts, is now connected to Zapier. So now we have what we actually need to build our automation because we're now telling Zapier specifically which accounts for each step of the automation that we want to use. So the next thing we want to do now is build the actual automation. But before we move on, if you like this video so far, feel free to give me a like and a subscribe below. That way you're updated on all my future videos to come. Now, moving on, we're going to build the automation out. So what we want to do here is go on the left menu and click on zaps. A zap is essentially an automation within Zapier. So if I have an account with, let's say 20 zaps, that means I currently have 20 different live automations that are currently going on in my business. So what we want to do is build one of these specifically. I'm gonna start by creating a zap by clicking this button right here. And so it's important you understand how these work. Within an automation, you always have a few different steps. The first step is always called the trigger step. And this is essentially what triggers the automation. So in this case, the trigger is when someone fills in a lead form out of my Facebook ads. That would be my trigger step in my automation. Followed by a trigger, you have what's called action steps. And so an action step is what you want to happen once your trigger has been applied. Once my trigger, which is the lead form, has been filled out, what I want is to receive an email to my inbox with all that lead information. So in a scenario like this, it would essentially just be an automation with two different steps where my Facebook lead ad would be my trigger step and then the email to my inbox would be my action step. And so I'm gonna select trigger right here and specifically my trigger step is going to be a Facebook lead ad event. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm using that correct app right here and the trigger event is going to be new lead. Next, it's asking you specifically which account you want to use. It's asking this because you might have multiple different Facebook accounts connected to your Zapier here, but in this case, I only connected once. I'm gonna make sure that this stays the same and I'm gonna click on continue right here. So next it's going to ask you which page your lead form is running from. So I'm gonna choose a value here. And if you can't find what you're looking for, you can always click on load more, that way more options come up. I'm currently running my ads specifically from this page right here, which is this page right here. So I'm gonna select that. And then from there, it's asking you which specific form is it that you want to use as the trigger step? Because in your ad account, you might have multiple different ads with multiple different forms that you're getting 
get different pieces of information from. So right here, it's just asking you which one of these forms is it that you want to trigger this step. Specifically in here, in this account, I only have one, which is the capture basic customer information form. So I'm gonna select that right here. And from there, what I wanna just do is test my trigger. So what I can do here is I can click on test trigger. And so what it's going to do when you test your trigger is it's going to scan different triggers that have already happened. So right here, I can find what's called a record. So lead A. So this is essentially someone who has filled out this form already. And it'll use that information to use as a test to see if the trigger actually works correctly. And so what I can do is I can click this and continue with the selected record. And so if yours is blank, that just means that your trigger step has never happened before in the past. And so what you want to do is you want to force a test lead to trigger this step. And in order to do that, what you want to do is you want, you want to now go into your Facebook ads, find the ad with the specific form that you are trying to set up your automation with, click on that ad. And then from there, you're going to click on this button right here. And you're going to want to preview your ad specifically on the Facebook desktop feed. So click on that. From there, what will happen is it'll open up your Facebook personal profile. And if you scroll down at some point, the ad that you're running will appear. And what you want to do is you want to click on the call to action, fill out the form. And then from there, click on find new records. And then that new record of that new test lead should now pull through. And so once you have that, click on continue selected record. It's now going to prompt you to start building out your action step, which is a Gmail step. So I'm going to click on that, click on the action event. And so what I want to do here is I want to receive an email with all the information that has come from my Facebook lead ad. And so what I want to do is click on send an email as an action. And specifically from that email I connected previously. So again, this is giving you an option because you might have multiple Gmail accounts in your Zapier account. I only have one for this case. So I want to use this one and I specifically want my emails to land in this inbox. So this is the one I'm going to use. And from there, I'm going to click on continue. Now it's going to ask you for a couple different things. So two, essentially what this means is who is receiving the email or who are you sending the email to? So I want to send it to myself, which is this email right here. So make sure that whatever email it is, you want to be receiving these leads, make sure that that is in your to form and select enter on send message to Google contacts group label, leave that on false CC. I'm not CCing anyone BCC. I'm not doing that either. If you want multiple other people on your team to receive these emails as well, you can feel free to add their emails in the CC or BCC fields and hit enter. That way your email is sent to multiple different people at once, but I don't need to do that in this example right here. Then it's going to ask you who is this email being sent from? So I'm just going to select my email as well. So what's happening here is I'm just sending an email from myself to myself with the lead information. So you can make this anything you want, but if you just make it the same email, that works totally fine. Then it's going to ask the from name. So who is the email coming from? So I'm just going to put my name here, reply to, I'm just going to leave this blank and subject lines. And so subject line is the subject line that will appear on the email. So before you click on that email, that like short phrase that pops up in bold in your Gmail account. So specifically for this, just make it relevant to what it is you're doing. That way, when you get a notification, it's obvious what it is. So in this case, I can have something along the lines of new Facebook lead sign up or something of the sort. That way, every time I check my email and I see one of these in my subject fields, I know instantly that I just got a new lead for my Facebook ads. For my body type, I'm just going to leave this plain. And then now comes body. So this is what is written down in your email. And so what I want to do here, I just want to keep it pretty simple and just ping a notification that says you just got a new lead with then the lead information. So I'll start by doing that. You just received a new lead from Facebook ads. From here, I just want to display what that lead information is. So I want to have the name of the lead, the email of the lead and the phone of the lead. That's because that's what I'm capturing from my lead form. As you can see right here, this is what someone fills out when they fill out my lead forms, my full name, the email and the phone number. So I just want that stuff displayed within the email right here. This is where I'm going to start adding my dynamic variables. So instead of typing in like a name or just typing anything, really what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on plus and I'm going to select a variable. Specifically, I have three different variables. I have my full name, I have my email and I have my phone number. So the first one would be the full name. The second one would be the email. And the third one would be the phone number, which is right here. What this does is this allows you to use what's called a dynamic variable. So whatever the full name that that person typed in to your lead form that will populate right here. So this email will not say full name, test lead, blah, blah, blah. It'll actually say like the full name of what that person wrote down. Same thing for the email, same thing for the phone number. That way, this is what enables you to set this up just one time. And no matter who is filling out the information that will automatically update by itself before the email is sent. And so if you correctly did this, what you should have now is just a simple email that will have a new Facebook lead sign up subject line. And once you click on the email, you'll have a body of your email that just says like you just received a new lead followed by the lead information that you want. And so now moving on, I don't want a signature to this. I don't want to label on my inbox.
box. You could add a label. So let's say like you have a specific folder in your Gmail specifically for Facebook leads. You could label this with a Facebook lead label. That way all of them end up in the same folder and end up in the same place just to stay organized. But I'm not gonna do that for now. It is something you can do, however. And I'm gonna click on continue. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to test step. And so now I've tested the step. And what I wanna do is, is to check to see if that worked or not. So I'm gonna go to my email now and I'm gonna see that I just got a new Facebook lead sign up. So the subject line I have is exactly what I wrote down within Xavier. So that part is working fine. I'm gonna click on this right here and I can see that my body is working too. So you just received a new lead from Facebook ads. The name is test lead, this, this is the email and this is the phone number. So this is essentially like a test lead information that went through. So this is not like an actual phone number and this is not an actual full name. However, it did work because that is the test information that went through Facebook. So this is essentially working exactly as it should. And in the future, if a real person actually signs up using my Facebook lead ads, I would get an email that's just like this, where this would be the exact person's first name that they filled out on the form right here. The email would be the email they filled out right here. And then the phone number would be right here. And that way, what you'll end up having is every time someone fills out this form, you'll get a series of these emails and you'll automatically get notified within your inbox in an organized way of your entire leads that are coming through from your Facebook ads. And once I'm done all that, what I can do is I can click on publish right here. And from there, once your zap is published, it should then be live. So until you actually publish the zap, it will be saved as a draft. So all the things you made will be saved. However, it won't be live. It's only gonna be live and be functional once you actually publish the zap. So just keep that in mind. So that's all there is to it for today's video. If you did this correctly, you should now have an automation that essentially connects your Facebook ads to your inbox. That way your inbox gets all of the leads that you generate out of your Facebook ads. Zapier can be used for many different purposes, not just this. It can be used to pretty much connect any software with any other software online. And it's a very powerful tool to use to build automations to your workflows and reduce the amount of errors in your business. So my recommendation would be to play around with Zapier, see what options there are and see how you can use this tool to most effectively streamline things in your business online. Also, if you have an idea for a Zap, but you have no idea how to build it, or if you just want someone to manage your Facebook lead formats for you, you can feel free to book a call with me using the link in the description below. And if you have any questions about any of the technical steps I went through in this video, feel free to drop that in the comments below as well. Other than that, I hope this saves you a lot of time in your business and reduces the amount of errors you have in your workflows. And I'll see you on the next one.